right, welcome to this video. I'm going to do a brief video on Newton's third law here, and uh, this is just a classical problem, and uh, you need to know how to do it. Um, so I have, I'm going to be finding the tension throughout a series of moving masses, symbolically of course, uh, simply because by doing it symbolically it appeals to a wider range of applications, and also you need to practice doing problems symbolically. So let's get started on this. Let's take a look here at what we have. We have a system here that's moving and it's got a force applied and it's going to be enough to pull all of these masses here. Okay, So I've got a force applied and this force applied is pulling but these two ropes here between mass 1 and mass 2 and mass 3 um, these do not have the same force as the force applied. They're different and what's going to happen is these forces are actually and these tensions are actually going to be less each one's going to be successively less than the previous. And the reason is this. When you have a force applied pulling on this series, this force has to pull all three of the blocks. This tension here only has to pull these two, and then this tension's only pulling this one. So that's why it's going to decrease as you go. It's not the same throughout. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you how to begin the simplest way when you have a problem like this. I'm going to begin by defining a system around these three objects, okay? So by doing that, I'm going to take a dashed line here, and I'm going to make a system like this. And by defining the system, we can define what we're going to treat as one unit and what we're, we're going to cut off from the system, right? So I'm going to just start out with this first, and I'm going to call this system A. Okay, so let me just get a nice line around that. So I'm going to treat all of these blocks as if they're one mass. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call that I'm going to call that system A, okay? Like right here. So that's my first system that I'm defining, okay? So very important because I need to take the whole system first because all of these masses they're going to share the acceleration, okay? They're not going to share the forces, but they're all accelerating at the same rate. So they're going to share that acceleration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find this acceleration of the system first and I do that by taking the whole the system as a whole so for system A I can apply Newton's second law here and Newton's second law is simply this the sum of the forces equals what equals F net but it also equals what? It also equals m a net. The total mass of the system. Okay. And I'll put here mt mass total just so you can see that clarification. So in my system right here I have my force applied. So the sum of the forces I just have one force here so I can basically say that force applied here equals the mass total which is 3m all of the masses okay times a net like that so if I zoom in here you can clearly see I got all three masses mass 1 mass 2 mass 3 and they're gonna share the acceleration so now I'm gonna define the acceleration the acceleration of the whole system is simply gonna be F applied over 3m. And I'm going to be able to use that later on in uh, the next part of this problem. So that was part A where I took the system boundary of the whole thing. So that was the first part. I found the you know the the acceleration given the I was given the force applied in three masses. I found the acceleration of the system which was force applied over three times the mass. Now I want to find out the other tensions in the ropes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new boundary here with just these two masses, okay? So why would I do that? Well, I could define a boundary anywhere, right? I could define a boundary um, like this, right? I could define a boundary like this, right? But when you're, you're defining your boundaries, here's one of the keys to do. You define a boundary in which you have the least number of forces that appear. It's going to make your life easier. If I define it here, I would have this force and this tension. I would have two forces. So I'm going to define this boundary here like this. And now when I have that boundary, okay, boundary, let's call this boundary B here, when I have that, 
now I'm just going to have this tension of this rope going this way, right? So I have this tension, force tension 1, let's just call that, okay, going this way. So now there's only one uh, force applied again. So it's, it's a similar situation to this one, but now I'm just looking at this. And the whole point of this was we had to get the acceleration first, right? So now that we have the acceleration, we can begin to, to find this. So I'm going to look at boundary B here, like this. And again, I'm going to just apply Newton's second law. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces equals force net. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration net. And again, mass total. And I, you know, you may want to draw your arrows above this just to show that you, you do recognize that these are vectors. <clears throat> so my sum of my forces here, I just have FT1, force tension 1. So in this case, I'm going to have force tension 1 equals, in this case, we have two masses, right? So I'm just going to write 2M times A net. Okay, so let's take let's take our A net from up here because we know they share that, right? So I can go ahead and see it here. I can say FT1 equals 2M times, what was my acceleration up here, okay? It was, I'm just going to write it like this in red so you can see it, force applied over three times the mass. And so what happens here? Well, the force of the tension, this is the masses are going to cancel. So you're going to clearly see that the force of the tension 1 is going to equal 2 thirds times the force applied. So you can clearly see that the force as we go down, now we know that this force right here is 2 thirds. I'll go ahead and write it in there, equals 2 thirds of the force applied. So now the force is becoming less as we go down, right? Because this one pulled the whole thing. This is just pulling these two. And now what are we going to do to find the tension in this one? What do you think we're going to do? We're going to basically apply the same line of thought and we're going to define a new boundary. Okay, so let's make this boundary, let's make this one purple just to show the difference here in the colors. So we got red and blue and purple. And again, I'm taking my system, I'm defining it just around this mass. Okay, you can define a system anywhere. You can define, you know, you could have defined this whole system with these three blocks on the ground. You could have defined them off the ground. Um, you can define these two, this one. You could have defined it here, or you could have defined it here. But again, why are we choosing the way that we're choosing? Why are we choosing this top-down approach? Because I want to have the least number of forces each time. So if I cut this one, there's only one force. If I cut this one, there's only one. And now if I cut this one, there's only going to be one force here. So again, I can show this here. So let's just draw a little arrow here just to show that I have this tension here going away. So this is FT2, okay? And I'm, that's what I'm looking for now. That's the next thing. So scrolling down here, we're gonna follow the same train of logic again. Same exact train of logic that we did before. So I'm on step C here. This is the, the C boundary we just did. So I'm gonna do it again, Newton's second law. Sum of the forces. equals F net which also equals MA net depending on what you're trying to find. Okay. So again, we know that this A net is the same one they share it. They all share it, right? So this one again, this is the mass total. So, scrolling down here, um, my my sum of my forces now is what? What is the sum of my forces? I just have FT there, FT, uh, FT2 to the left, right? So I'm going to have FT2. Okay, equals just one mass times a net. And again, I'm going to write it in red because we derived that from the first the first system or situation we had there. So F of a over 3m. And I'm going to close that parentheses now in purple. So the masses now are going to cancel out. So FT2 
is simply going to be the one third of the force applied. And that's how you would find the series of tensions down this line of the system. So this is going to be one third of the force applied initially. Uh, so I solved this symbolically just because I think it's a lot cleaner. If you can learn to work symbolically in physics, you can accomplish a lot more. And, and the work is much cleaner. When you're following your steps, you're going to be able to see clearly what you did. I know it's a, people like to plug in numbers and you know work with the numbers and keep consolidating the numbers, but it's much better if you can work in the symbolic fashion. I do want to close this out by showing just one thing that one assumption that we made that is critical. Whenever you're doing force problems, we make an assumption about a positive direction. And in this case, since the net force was to the left, that was our positive x direction. That was the positive x. So this is why when I when I said the sum of the forces equals the F M A net, the reason why I was able to show this as a positive force here was because it I made the left the positive direction. Okay, so it's very important when you're doing force problems you gotta choose your axis, your positive axis in the direction of your net force and it makes the problem a lot easier. You're, gonna ha you're not gonna have to deal with a lot of the signs. So, uh, Same thing with the Y force, but in this case there was no net force in the Y. So in the, in the Y direction um, we simply had um, the forces canceled out so that, that was simply the first law. The sum of the forces equals zero. And in the, the X direction we did have our, our second law here which we knew there was a net force each time, right? There was a net force, so it, if you have that net force, always make your, your positive axis in that direction. All right, that's all I've got for you right now. Thanks for watching. Check back soon for more videos.